All right, lads, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Guardian's newest copy and paste vehicle. Well, I guess they already added another copy and paste vehicle for the Americans this update, which was that basically the American Avery, I guess. Not real well, America in real life copy and pasted the British gun, I guess, for the American main start seething on me. That is a joke. But anyway, today, we're going to be taking a look at the M1128 Wolfpack. This is basically a normal tech tree m1128 that got some fancy green dress ha hanged on the side of it i guess it also has a weaker main gun round which seems like a downside but it's still pretty potent in my opinion but we'll cover that shortly so anyway this is an m1128 which doesn't have the m900 apfsds round so this tank is basically the replacement of the xm1 premium which is getting a bit long in the tooth now or old in the tooth whatever the saying is i should know i am british but anyway, the XM1, despite being highly mobile, its main gun round, the M735, is god-awful, pretty terrible. Not really comparable with something like the Terms. And to be perfectly blunt at the start of the video, I don't think the M1128 Wolfpack is also equivalent to the Terms. But before we go any further, let's start covering some of the basics. The M1128 Wolfpack is a Rank 6 American Premium, located at battery rating 9.0 in Arcade and 9.7 in Realistic and Sim. To purchase the tank, you're going to have to fork out 9,090 Golden Eagles, making it one of the most expensive premiums currently in game, at least for the tanks. Putting this vehicle in your lineup is pretty easy, only 10,000 Silver Lions, it is a premium after all, but for the Expert and Ace qualification, it's 1,210,000 Silver Lions for the Expert, and 2,100 Golden Eagles for the Ace quality. So for 9,000 Golden Eagles, is it worth buying this M1128 cosplaying as a tree? Well, while the tank's performance is pretty good, I don't think it's as good as an all-rounder of some of the other premiums in-game. But is that opinion right of me, or am I just talking out my ass? Well, stick around for the rest of the video, and I'll go through my reasoning why. boys welcome back starting off as always with the mobility and it's a wheelie boy so it's going to be pretty fast in a straight line historically in war thunder wheeled vehicles have always been it's like driving on syrup i guess it's they've never really had good traction apparently they've fixed that in the last update it feels a little bit better to me but it's still not great to drive to be honest especially something like the the wolf pack here i can't keep on saying m1128 it just gets on my nerves Anyway, the tank does feel very sluggish, especially when you're trying to manoeuvre. So I've said it quite a lot in previous videos, but again, this tank feels very mobile, but not very manoeuvrable. Anyway, the tank is powered by an engine producing 350 horsepower. Combined with the vehicle's weight of 18.7 tons, it gives the tank a power to weight ratio of 18.7 horsepower per ton. This would be pretty bad if it was a tractor vehicle, but because power to weight isn't as important on a wheeled vehicle, it still gives you a decent amount of acceleration, to be honest. We can reach a top speed of 97 kilometers per hour in a um, in top speed, sorry, going forward. That's the right word. And 13 kilometers per hour in reverse. However, you're never going to reach those top speeds in in a game. Well, if you do, you're doing something wrong. You shouldn't just be holding down the W key, even though we all do it. But anyway, the speed certainly is an asset of this tank which isn't really the best to be honest because if we move on to the protection section, this tank is very, very vulnerable indeed. If we take a look at the cutaway here, we can see that we have a crew of only three men. True, we do have quite a lot of dead space around the center of the vehicle, which is space where there's not really anything there. So it just absorbs shots, especially at a high battery rate and we've got APF SDS around. Getting a shot in the side, particularly just before the turret ring, it can go straight through without really doing much damage. However, from the frontal aspect, you are likely to get one shot killed, especially if you get shot on the right hand side of the vehicle because it's probably going to kill your driver and gunner. But as you can imagine, on a mobile gun system, the armed protection itself is pretty dire as well. The entire tank is made from 12.7mm thick steel, so basically half an inch of steel. This is basically the structural frame of the tank. We do also have an upgraded armor package though for this vehicle. This is called the Mexus 2C. It's basically an additional inch of armor protection. But having around only one and a half inches of armor protection 
it's not exactly going to save you from a turns round, is it? Obviously, the tank is pretty weak against the high caliber kinetic energy rounds, as well as pretty much all chemical weapons. So artillery, dumb bombs from planes, guided bombs, you are very vulnerable to cast and artillery in general. We're also very vulnerable to IFVs. If we take a look at this um, penetration map, I believe it's called, we can see here that when we're using the BMP2M, the BM2PM, yeah, the really overpowered thing with the 30mm APFSDS, we can see that we get penetrated pretty much everywhere from the front. So despite having an add-on armor package, it's still not going to save you from the most common IFE at the battle rating. Certainly the most common IFE that you will be facing. So while you do have a good top speed, it certainly doesn't have the armor protection to save you if you just hold the W key and autistically drive into the enemy spawn and then complain when you get shot. I do it all the time, I'm sure you do as well. Just because you've got speed doesn't mean you should use it. That's a pretty good tip. That's how I learned from the good old days when the M18 Hellcat was one of the top tier vehicles for the American tree. Actually, back in the day, the, M the Tiger players were complaining because the M18 was so fast. That was like a couple of months after War Thunder tanks got introduced. But again, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's move on to the firepower of this bad boy. And of course, it is armed with the 105mm M68A1 E8 cannon. This gun is mounted on a turret or probably more accurately a barbette we don't really have a full turret around the gun which in theory does improve survivability but in reality it's kind of just a gimmick anyway we can only take a total of 18 rounds of ammunition into a battle and we have a first stage ammunition storage of eight rounds this gun is auto loading and those eight rounds are stored in a carousel next to the driver and commander in game we have a fire rate of seven and a half seconds this is of course an automatic loader I believe in real life it should be a little bit faster, at least that's what the American mains complain about on the forums. I believe it should be between 5 or 6 seconds, something like that. The 7.5 seconds d does, it. it is quite slow to be honest, obviously you get beaten in a reload by a T-72. So in terms of firepower, you don't really have an advantage over the Soviets at this battle rating, especially as you'll see when we get onto the ammunition. Your ammunition also is a little bit, it's not subpar, but it's certainly not outpowering enemy tanks like the M900 on the Tech Tree version. But anyway, as you'd expect, this tank is also fully stabilized in the, both the horizontal and vertical axis. We also have third generation thermal imaging, I believe. Very high quality makes it very easy to acquire targets, especially in sim battles. We also have a laser range finder, which helps with accurate long range fire. And we also have a plethora of heavy machine guns on the tank. Not too useful at this battle rating, but you can use it to destroy enemy tracks and generally annoy enemy players. Anyway, moving on to our theoretical stock shell. This is a premium tank, so you will never have to use this to grind it out. But we do have the M456A2 heater fest shell. It travels pretty quick to be honest, over, well, nearly 1200 meters per second. I haven't really used it that much as I'd expect because it's a heat shell and screw using that. Well, heater fest, I guess, accurately. 400 millimeters of penetration quite good for a heat shell but never going to use it we then have the m774 apf sds round this is the same top it's the basically the tier 4 unlock for the m1 abrams the original abrams tank so it's not bad to be honest travels at 1500 meters per second pretty quick not as get again not as quick as some of the soviet shells but it has about 365 millimeters of penetration at 500 meters its angled penetration though is a little bit lacking we're at 60 degrees, it's only 211 meters at 500, uh, 211 millimeters, sorry, at 500 meters. So it's a little bit hit and miss. At long ranges, you are going to struggle with some of the T-72s and T-90 tanks, stuff like that. But at close range, generally, it is pretty easy to penetrate your enemies. We also have one other round. This is the M833. This is found on some of the other, not top tier, but like 10.0 American tanks. It travels a little bit slower at 1485 meters per second, but has slightly higher penetration around 387 millimeters against flat armor. And at 60 degrees, it's about it's about 10 millimeters more to be honest. It's not amazing. 224 millimeters of pen at 500 meters against armor angled at 60 degrees. So not amazing compared to the M774, but the the M833 does feel very good, especially against some of the flatter armor like the sides of the T80s. It's not like the M29A1 round that you find at top tier where you can shoot the side of a T72 even if he's angled against you and it's still going to penetrate. Can't really do that with these shells. They are good though. You can generally penetrate any Soviet tank if you aim for the commander, not the commander, the driver's port. 
The thing I'm trying to say though, it's not as dominant as the M900 round. The M900 round is much stronger and found on the tech tree tank. What I'm trying to make clear is that by no means is this thing a copy and paste of the tech tree M1128. The M900 round has nearly 80mm more penetration against armour angled at 60 degrees. It can penetrate around 300mm. So it's a, it's a huge lack in performance compared to the tech tree one. Anyway though, compared to the XM1, which is the main competition of the M1128, at least in the American tech tree, this tank is probably a little bit slower. It has a better fire, it's got a better firepower, that's undeniable. It's better gun ergonomics in my opinion. You've got that really high resolution thermal imaging, which is very nice. I'd say that the XM1 though is more mobile. It's got better overall protection. They're both really not that great to be honest, but the XM1 is a little bit better. It's got spaced armor and some composite. The XM1's gun isn't that good, but you can use its speed a lot better than this thing. You can't really be that aggressive in the Wolf Pack. That's the biggest concern with it, really. Compared to something like the ZTZ-96A or the T-72AV Terms, we can use those tanks to be aggressive brawlers in a pinch. That's why Russian teams either completely destroy everybody within the first five minutes or get completely destroyed in the first five minutes. I saw the premium players just hold W and rush to, straight to the cat point. Sometimes they kill everybody out of luck, sometimes they get killed. With this thing though, you can't really be that aggressive. You just don't really have the survivability. The gun rate of fire as well of 7.5 second reload is not the best. That's actually slower than the terms. And you can't really brawl with them either. So while the M1128 Wolfpack does bring some quality of life improvements over the XM1, I'd still say in general that the XM1 is a better premium. Sure, you've got a little bit harder time when it comes to aiming your gun to get that penetration to penetrate, or that ammunition to penetrate, sorry. I just don't really think that the Wolfpack is that good, to be honest. It's a very weak vehicle, even the Tetri M1128 is a little bit... It's only really a passive sniping vehicle, where in War Thunder, for a good premium, you want an all-rounder that's got good survivability, can be used to push an objective, which you can't really do that in the Wolfpack. It's only really good as well on the more rural maps where you can flank a little bit. On urban maps, your high speed just gets you killed more of the time because you just rush into an enemy. You also can't slow down that quick as well, which usually means you drive straight into enemies. But anyways, lads, I think I've rambled for quite a bit. I'd say give this tank a miss, to be honest. At half price, $30, maybe it'll be a nice addition. If you already have the XM1, then don't even consider it. I just don't see why you'd ever want to get this. America doesn't really have a good top tier grinder at the minute. It's kind of like the British and the Japanese. The best premiums in the game are still the Chinese ZTZ-96A and the Soviet terms. So yeah, boys, I'd give this a miss. But as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. Trying to get my channel to maybe 40k this year. See if we can do it. Might be a little bit optimistic. But anyway, boys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I'm trying to be a little bit less scripted and more of a... Make some more jokey, edgy memes. I don't know. Hopefully it comes through. I think uh, it comes across less as comedic and more just me being a autistic retard on the internet. Anyway, though, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. As always, big thank you to all my subscribers and channel members. And yeah. And as always, remember to dry your tent before putting it away for the season.